In this video, we're gonna be comparing the Nike Alpha Fly versus the Saucony Endorphin Pro. Hey, what's up everyone, and welcome back to 40 Runs. Now, if this is your first time at 40 Runs, I want you to smash that little pink button down there that says subscribe on it. Go to our Facebook page and join the 40 Runs running community and check out the description. There's loads of cool things down there. Right, like I said in the opening, this week we're going to be checking out the Alpha Fly and we're going to be comparing it versus the Saucony Endorphin Pro. Right guys, so here they are, we're going to have another heavyweight bout. If you've not seen the reviews of this, I've done already, check it out. I've also done a video of this versus the Next Percent, the Vaporfly Next Percent. And I've also done a review of this shoe and versus the Next Percent, the Vaporfly Next Percent as well. So there's plenty for you to keep you occupied over the next few days. Right, before we get into which one I prefer, let's start with some of the statistics. I think that's probably the best way on the features. Um, we'll start off with the Saucony. It's 190 pounds here in the UK. It is currently sold out again, but if you can get your hands on it, it's 190 pound. The shoe has a 35 mil stack height with an eight mil drop. Weighs in at about seven and a half ounces. That's for a size nine. You've got the Power Run uh, PB midsole. You've got the Speed Roll uh, technology. We'll come onto that. And it's got um, S-shaped carbon fiber plate running through it as well. This bad boy, is, which is a monster, uh, has got a massive 40 mil stack height on one of the shoes, which is the maximum it's allowed under the new regulations. You've got two zoom uh, air zoom pockets up the front where they've carved out some of the Zoom X. The Zoom X midsole is Nike's most responsive and it gives you the most energy return out of all their midsoles, and that's why they stuck loads of it on here. Because they've stuck so much on here, the weight has increased. This thing is roughly around eight and a half to nine ounces, depending on what size you are. Uh, they've replaced the vapor weave with the Atom Knit, which I'm not a huge fan of, but it's just personal choice. Both shoes fit true to size for me. I have seen people go down half a size in the um, Alpha Fly, but for me personally, I've gone for both in a UK nine and a half. That's just me. Right, so where do we start? Oh, 260 pounds, ouch. Uh, so where do we start? Well, let's start with the Saucony. The Saucony for me is just a much more uh, normal, normal, normal ride. Firstly, actually, before we get into too much detail, both of these shoes are not designed for me. I've said it before in other videos about this shoe. I'm not an elite runner. I don't run a marathon in sub three hours. If you're looking for somebody who runs a marathon, a marathon in below three hours to review these shoes, it's not me, right? I'm looking at all these shoes from just like an everyday runner perspective, okay? They're not designed for me. I train hard, I work hard, and if I can get a pair of shoes that'll give me that little couple of percent more, I'm willing to give it a go. So just to put that out there now. But the Saucony Pro for me is more of a traditional shoe. Uh, it just feels and looks like more of a traditional shoe. It, it is a little bit narrower uh, than some of the shoes out there, but Saucony's in general do come up narrower, but I haven't found that a problem. But the whole feel of the shoe just feels more traditional than something like this. The uh, Power Run PB midsole, it's firmer than a Zoom X, um, but that's for me not a problem, I actually prefer that. It's one of the reasons why I've got the Brooks Hyperion Tempo in my rotation. I just like that slightly firmer sort of midsole, which still gives me the propulsion. With the Speed Roll, you're much more going through from heel to toe and you feel like you're running on your toes, which is great because I'm a heel striker, but I feel a lot more up on my toes. So I'm getting a nice energy return and I'm, I'm definitely coming through and getting up on my toes. So I'm increasing my speed and I'm running more efficiently. Obviously it's super lightweight and it just feels awesome. It just feels like you can really carry speed. Um, and it's a very nicely balanced shoe. I think that's the best way to describe it. Uh, the <laughs> This monster, which I think I described quite uh, a lot in the other videos I've done on it, is very much a, I believe, a sort of GT racing car. It, it holds speed over longer distances. It's the sort of grand tour of the, of the, what's the racing uh, shoe world, I would say. It is built for marathons, this thing. It wants you to sort of maintain that speed over the marathon distance. It's not something like the, the Vaporfly, which is always just asking you to run faster. This thing I have found, when I run a more consistent pace, gives me more. So I'm at, you know, if I'm at goal pace and I'm doing a goal pace run, this thing will help me and carry me further um, and I feel fresher on it. And that's the thing with it. You do get that sort of trampoline effect from the load of Zoom X at the back, but then it pushes you onto this firmer air uh, pocket here, which I described it in the other video. It's like, you, you know, when you're bouncing up and down the trampoline, you're bouncing up and down and somebody pushes you forward. 
that's the sort of sensation in your feet you get from this shoe because you get that soft sort of bounce here you then get that propulsion here with the plate and it sort of kicks you on and that's where you're able to maintain that speed i believe for longer and that's where this this shoe is just absolutely uh, in another world of its own. And that's why obviously Kipchoge done what he done in it. And I think that's a, a testament to Nike for what they've developed in this shoe. Like I said a moment ago, I'm not a huge fan of this upper. It is one of the letdowns for me. There's nothing wrong with it, guys. This is still an awesome upper. But for me, personal preference, I've never really liked the, the fly knit uppers. I much prefer this minimalistic upper on the Saucony. Uh, it just feels like a racing shoe, which I just really prefer the whole feel of that. So out of the two, cut to the chase, which would I buy? This one, well, I've actually bought both of them, but this one, if money, um, if you only had 200 pounds and somebody said, oh, 260 pounds, and someone said to you, you've got to buy one of these, for me, I would buy the Saucony Endorphin Pro all day long. Why? I just, like I said to you, I like the overall feel of it. I prefer that slightly firmer ride. I like the speed roll. I like the fact that I'm up on my toes. But more importantly than anything else, I just like the whole sensation of the more traditionalist kind of shoe. I like the lightness, the breathability, and yeah, oh, and the fact that it's 190 pounds. So there you go, guys, quite controversial. This is an amazing piece of kit, right? It is an amazing shoe. And if you wanna go for it, get it. 260 pounds, it's a lot of money. Is it worth it? Yeah, argument's sake, it probably is, because it is a real feat of engineering. But for me, I think the Endorphin Pro is the better out of the two.